professional, I suppose. And what does Mrs. Eves say about it? She claimed to know nothing about it, in spite, in spite of the fact that the body was found in the kitchen with a cup, saucer, and this is a plate of biscuits. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, she says the first she knew about it was when she went into the kitchen in the morning and just saw him there, laying on the floor. Really? And that was when she called the police. And she didn't call Dr. Appleby, yeah? No, <laughs> just the police. Curious, sir. Um, curious, sir. As Alice would say, I wonder, I wonder where it is. One dead man. No, you bloody fool. <laughs> 21 and a half, Harvey Street. <laughs> Where is the half? Goodness sakes, Holmes. You're not still wondering about that, are you? Yes, and I shall continue to wonder about it until I can prove a satisfactory answer. <laughs> I don't know. Perhaps it's something small, like to the house. An outside lavatory, perhaps. <laughs> 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 the infamous assassin, Annie Carlos, was hiding in the outside library this whole time. Of course. <laughs> well, it's the last place I've ever looked. I know. You always let me go and look. You're a medical man, Watson. <laughs> anyway, I don't think it's that sort of address. It's too affluent for that sort of effluent system. <laughs> what? What do you want? The garden was attached to the house. It could be a garden shed. No, I don't think it's a garden shed, Holmes. The inspector never mentioned them in his description, and he described everything, everything, in minute detail. <laughs> Robin Samson, Sean on <laughs> style. <laughs> Whoa. It's not a garden shed. It could be a tree house. It did say it's like had children. Yes, but they're girls. I don't think they'd be interested in a tree house. Wouldn't be ladylike. True. If Smithy had daughters rather than sons, that they would not play in the tree house. No. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder. What? If boys play tree house, it's in girls' places. <laughs> a doll's house. A doll's house. Yes. But an excellent educational tool. Well, of course. Doll's house, fraction of the size of real house. Hence, 21 Hub Street must be a doll's house. And why the Carlos Cornelio was never hiding in any secret room in 21 Hub Street, but his passport and other identification papers were hidden by Smithy in the doll's house. Hence, the absurd claim that one Carlos Cornelio was hiding in the corner of Hub Street. Oh my god! Bravo, <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Well, I've an excellent theory, but I must have. What was he doing with Cornelia's Thinking about Watson. If you're uh, saying he's had a quiet life, we want some good trailer. What better way is a man who tends to hand over his passport and other identification papers during his stay? It sounds right, Holmes, but I'm surprised that someone like Juan Carlos Cornelia would ever agree to do that. Well, I'm sure that those who refused, but if they did, Smithy simply turned them away. Amazing, Holmes. I've got to hand it to you. Your detective powers are there. Second to none. Thank you very much, Watson. Thank you so very right. much. Tomorrow morning, <laughs> while the inspector's busy shaking our floors and knocking our walls, we shall make a careful examination of the doll's house. Remember me, your mallet.
this. I'll be acting as you can for the day, eh? So it's going to be the left hand of the mallet or the right? The right hand, of course. Of course. Of course. You've handed it to me. Oh. The left hand mallet. How foolish of me. What? Watson, you've done it again. With the left hand cheaper. Goodness sakes. There's no such thing. Ah, but there is. Check out the noble temple, and I explain how the infamous assassin Juan Carlos Camillo met his end. Ready? I am. It all begins when he's with his wife and children leave him, and he turns to drink. He gets drunk one night in the dark of French and brags to the landlord the infamous assassin Juan Carlos Camillo is staying in the corner of Harper Street. Would you rather say that? Indeed. Cornelia hears the rumours, I can find Smithy, and demands that his parents are returned. Smithy agrees and invites him for a high tier part of the street, but we don't mind. Cornelia and Bassa heard the rumours that Mrs. Eves has a sinister reputation and concluded it is not safe to go to Harper Street. So, he shoots Smithy the silence. Yes. Smithy is dead and can't be brought down. Mrs. Eves briefly goes later on. To collect the mail, check the house is secure. <laughs> it is important to note, write this down, she is not clean. But what do you think while she is down? It is. There is no need. No one is looking now. Right. Cornelia breaks in one night in search of his penis. He looks high, he looks low, but he cannot find them anywhere. He knows they are there. Somewhere. What should he do? Set fire to the house. He might have to, to destroy the papers. It's rather drastic, you not think, Holmes? Yes, but he will not get into that pot. Okay? Cornelia continues to deny the house and his papers. What else could they be? Cornelia is puzzled. He needs time to think. He decides a cup of tea and mull the whole problem. <laughs> a nice, relaxing cup of tea. And a lovely thing to see. He goes downstairs and unwittingly takes a left handed teacup from the cupboard. A left handed teacup. Yes, yes, a left handed teacup. Imagine if you will, an ordinary teacup. Okay? <laughs> if you are right hand, you will turn your hand into the teacup towards your right hand. You will pick it up. Yes. And you will drink from one particular set of cup. If, however, you are left handed, you will turn your hand to the teacup towards your left hand before you pick it up. And drink from the opposite side of the cup. See, so there is a difference. A left handed person will drink from the opposite side of the cup to a right handed person. Precisely! And if you smear poison inside used by right handed people, only they will be poisoned. Left handed people will not. And that is why Mrs. Eves is called Sinister Mrs. Eves. Because everyone except from her will be poisoned in Harper Street. Does that mean? Yes, it does. I'm afraid your dear friend, Dr. Appleby, is in fact a bad Appleby. Very troll, Holmes. Very troll. Sorry, Watson. I can resist. I take it then that Smith was only pretending to be sick when a home visitors fell ill. Yes, and I also read that Smithy is left handed. And all visitors right handed? I'm sure of it. And then he and his accomplice. Dr. Appleby, disposed of the bodies. Scandalous. Just scandalous. He'll be struck off if he's not careful. Quiet. But he will have let the infamous assassin, Juan Carlos Camillo. He is rather busy making himself a cup of tea, and he is going to lose some scrumptious for biscuits. <laughs> he is right handed, as most people are. He picks up a teacup which he got from the cupboard. And he drinks from the poison side and the balance. <laughs> yes. It's fascinating, Holmes. It's also fascinating. So only one cross can need these papers from Captain 21 Hawk Street. Yes. I wonder. If one Carlos can nearly have papers to kill him from the daughter by a smithy, who else might be lurking around? 
Uh, I think we might call it Scotland Yard tomorrow. What for? Well, I've never heard of this at the team. Have you? No, never met the chap. I thought not. All you really know about him is one strange very set. To is we have been contrived. You say it hurts. Well, but I'm not sure there really is this better better team before you arrive at Scotland Yard tomorrow. Oh, good heavens. We want to find out after we arrive that there's something there waiting for us. You could be right, folks. We'd better be careful tomorrow. We may need more than one mallet. We don't put us on this. He was so stiff. Indeed, Holmes. Indeed, you will. Oh, and the man who hired them all was a little chalet. Who? Your best friend. Not that alive. No. Yes. I'm afraid only he had killed knowledge of the four assassins or poison. Are you sure? Positive. Positive, Holmes. He helped the inspector write his letter. In that case, I'll personally strike him off. Good for you, Watson.
But the world is not made to stay like that. I made it to the It was not made to stay like that. I understand that, Tom. Go on. Well, then I said, I, I better go in. I couldn't do nothing for her. And she said, oh, yes, I could. She had to get on that train yonder and take down the box in the fifth row. It's not the same shift row you busted up. No, sir. A different one. Only for Tom to boom. And, and as I was looking for her, she was grabbing me. She grabbed me by my legs and she said, I, I, I was so scared that the chair turned over. Uh, that was the only thing. The only piece of furniture was still in that room with the bed. I, I swear for God. What happened after you turned the chair over? Uh, Tom, you swore to tell the truth. The whole truth. Will you tell it? I, I hopped down onto the chair and she sort of jumped on me. Jumped on you? Violently? No, sir, no. She, she hugged me. Hugged me around the waist. Then what happened? She reached up and she kissed me. She kissed me right here on the side of my face. She said she's never kissed a grown man before. And she might as well kiss me this way. And she said, well, it's hard to do it when you don't count. She says, kiss me back, nigga. And I said, Miss Myella, let me out. And I tried to run, but she got her back to the door. And I had to push her. I didn't want to hug Mr. Finch, but just as I did, Mr. Yuma got her through the window. What did he say, Tom? He said, something not right. Not fair for these folks chilling in here. Tom, you must tell the jury what he said. He said, you goddamn whore. I'll kill you. Why were you scared? Mr. Finch, if you were a black man like me, you'd be scared too. No further questions, Your Honor. You were given 30 days once for the solid conduct, Robinson. Yes, sir. What that nigga look like when you got through with him? He beat me, Mr. Gilbert. You say you're pretty strong. Chopping up kindling and busting up chip ropes with one hand. Yes, sir, I reckon so. Strong enough to choke the breath out of a woman and sling her to the floor? I've never done that, sir. Be strong enough to, ain't you? Yes, sir, I reckon so. Had your eye on her for a long time, hadn't you, boy? No, sir, I never looked at her that way. Then you're mighty kind to do all that chopping and holding for her. I was trying to help her out, I says. Why were you so anxious to do this woman's chores? I, I felt sorry for her. She seemed to have cry more than the rest of them. You felt sorry for her? You felt sorry for her? Get down here, boy. Go back once again on November 21st. Miss Maella says she invited you inside that house to get a nickel. Is that right? No, sir. She denied you went inside that house? No, sir. I said she did something for me to do inside the house. She said she asked you to bust up a chip roll. Is that right? No, sir. Then you say she's lying, boy. I, I don't say she's lying, Mr. Gilmer. I said she's mistaken in her mind. She says she turned around and you jumped on her. She must be mistaken in her mind. She says you grabbed her around the neck and threw her to the floor and took full advantage of her. Did you do that, boy? She's mistaken in her mind. She says she fought you as hard as she could. She's mistaken in her mind. She says she screamed. She's mistaken in her mind. Didn't you want that nickel, boy? Sir, she did not give me no nickel. Are you saying that absolutely none of this happened the way Miss Mallory says it did? Sir, I say she's mistaken in her mind. Didn't Mr. You run you off that property, boy? No, sir. I don't think he did. Don't think? What do you mean? I mean, I didn't stay long enough for him to run me off. You're very candid about all this. Why did you run so fast? Like I said before, it wasn't safe for any black man to be in a fix like that. But you weren't in a fix. You testified that you resisted Miss Melly. Were you scared that she'd hurt you? You ran? A big buck like you? No, sir. I scared I'd be in court just like I am now. Yeah, scared of arrest. Scared you'd have to face up to exactly what you did. No, sir. Scared I'd have to face up to something I didn't do. Are you being impudent to me, boy? No, sir. I didn't mean to be. Tom Robinson, a human being, so quiet and respectable, and a humble Negro with the unmitigated tendency to feel sorry for a white woman who had put his word against two white people. I need not remind you of their appearance and their conduct on the stand. You saw that for yourselves.
the witness for the state, with the exception of the sheriff of Macomb County, who presented themselves to you gentlemen, to this court, in the cynical confidence that their testimony would not be doubted. All rise. We find the defendant Tom Robinson guilty, guilty, guilty.
Thank you.